Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. Oh, Amazonas just got new support in the most recent set for Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, getting cards like War Chief as well as the new Pendulum cards to give them a boost to their attack prowess. So with this, is the deck good? Can we play it? And overall, how does the deck now perform? With new fusions and new main deck cards in order to facilitate their actual strategy, does the deck now actually have an overall game plan? Let's quickly do the explanation and the card by card. Amazonas is an archetype that centers around the battle phase using the Amazonas monsters to gain effects in the battle phase uh, similar to something like Warrock. However, the difference is that not all of their effects are specifically battle phase centric. Princess does have an effect that just on normal or special is able to search out an Amazonas spell trap from deck to hand. Pretty solid. Just a really good card overall. It's also also its name's its name becomes Amazonas Queen while on the field or in the graveyard, allowing you to use it as fusion material or just you know if you need to use it as uh, something else uh, where Queen would be necessary. On top of that, if it declares an attack, it can special summon a monster from the deck in defense position. Um, just by sending a card to the graveyard from your hand or field, you can then special summon an Amazonas, which is very nice, uh, allowing you access to the actual queen, which just says Amazonas monsters can't be destroyed by battle. All in all, very good. Uh, <clears throat> this overall facilitates the strategy of utilizing things like Onslaught, which can special summon a monster during the battle phase, and then also, uh, if your, your monster bat battles, you banish the monster. So, you know, just running into things is a way to clear them with Onslaught. Um, you also have access to things like Call, uh, which was just a quick play search. That's basically it. And then a myriad of other cards as well. Things like Baby Tiger to Special Summon Scouts for additional protection. Spy to uh, add a bit more recursion. Uh, so, yeah, all in all, that's how the strategy used to work. And it still does ultimately function that way, kind of relying on things like Onslaught and Princess in order to get those into rotation to then allow you to kind of deal with problematic boss monsters um, and, and the like. Now, this does mean that going second is a much better option for them, so playing cards like Evenly Matched is going to be much better. And since you don't need the battle phase on your first turn, you need it when you have Onslaught live, it is okay to kind of waste your battle phase or not utilize your battle phase with Evenly Matched, so there's that. But, as for the new support, we got some pretty decent stuff. War Chief allows you to special summon itself from hand pretty easily, and then on top of that, when it is normal or special, you get to set a spell trap or a polymerization from your deck to your, to your field, which allows you to either get things like Onslaught, Hall, Hot Spring, some of the newer cards, uh, or just set a polymerization for a fusion summon. On top of that, we also have access to Spiritualist, which can bounce a um, an Amazonist card to the hand in order to special summon itself, allowing you to then on special summon, add a polymerization from your deck to your hand, again, adding more uh, ability to go into the fusions. And then, of course, for some reason, they also got Pendulums. I don't know why, but alas. Both of the Pendulums basically do the same thing. Um, if they're used as fusion material uh, from the hand, or just if they're... Uh, yeah, I believe uh, if it's uh, plays in the pendulum zone. Um, if it has an Amazonas monster or special summon while this card is in your graveyard, you can place this card in your pendulum zone. This basically means that if you fusion summon using these cards um, from the hand, you can just place them into the pen pendulum zones, and then they both have the same effect where uh, Amazonas monsters gain attack equal to their own level times 100, um, and then also. When an attack is declared involving your Amazonas monster, the Silver Sword adds a spell trap, uh, an Amazonas spell trap from your grave to your hand, and this one pops a spell trap on the field. Both of which are pretty decent, but hey, they're also searchable and not all of that useful. Um, outside of, like, actually just, you know, battle. <laughs> so, overall, that is the way that the strategy works, along with just additional big beaters in the extra deck. That's more or less it. So, with the quick card by card, we're running two DD Crow, one Scout, triple Max C, the one Baby Tiger, one Spiritualist, one Spy, triple Princess, the best card, uh, and the second best card, that being War Chief, so we're playing three of those as well. We're running one Queen, we can special summon this off of Princess, so we're only running the one, and Princess basically becomes Queen um, in name, so you don't really need the other one. 
we're playing one piece of the silver sword as well as the golden whip and then two polymerization one reinforcements two amazonas village this is kind of interesting um it's nice to have every once in a while if like your monsters go to bat or like um go to grave and get destroyed and stuff like that um but all in all it's not all that great it's kind of one of those things to draw uh or to see like after everything else uh the additional 200 attack is also nice we have a double or sorry triple call as it is the way we search double called by double secret arts which is basically just polymerization at quick play speed as well as you can banish it in order to um fusion summon using uh an amazonist fusion monster from your extra deck or just an amazonist monster from your extra deck um as material which is very nice we have the triple evenly matched triple infip infip just happens to be really good in the current meta um both against tier as well as other things that might want to um uh that would also be playing the game like for example um uh exosister and flunder then we're playing two onslaught one hall which can uh add from deck or from grave to hand as well as um if your opponent special summons you gain life points it's kind of nice in certain situations uh and then we also have a hot spring which allows you to add an amazonas from your deck to the graveyard on active or er, from deck to hand on activation and um when you take battle damage you can gain life points equal to the dam damage that you took if you control an amazonas monster as for the extra deck we're playing one pet liger two empress empress has the ability to protect other amazonas cards from card destruction which is very nice and it's not a replacement effect it's just you're just protected so there's that uh we then have triple or sorry double pet liger king which is just another big body and then we have augusta uh which requires a fusion and an amazonas monster so it's the hardest to summon but it is the biggest of the beaters at 3200 with two attacks as for the rest of the the extra deck it doesn't really matter too much cerberus phoenix uh mascarena predator plant verte anaconda this one can kind of be utilized uh the only real way that you're doing it is through uh you basically activate polymerization um it's nice if you have like the ability to go into verite activate the effect and then send both of the pendulums not very useful but it exists um we also have elf uh unicorn avramax and apollosa so that's it for the deck let's hop into the replays and show you how this deck performs all right so here we are going second and uh hey look at that evenly matched Look, sometimes you just draw evenly matched, it's fine. So, anyway, my opponent is playing Tier, and they're going to activate the effect in order to go into their Merly, activate the effect of Merly, and go into... Huh? We're gonna... Huh. Okay, sure. Uh, I draw into the second evenly matched, and uh, we're just gonna immediately go into the battle phase and activate the evenly matched. They are going to activate Soliac as if it does anything here um it doesn't it doesn't do anything so they're gonna just banish the soliac sure that's fine uh anyway we're gonna go and activate our call they're going to activate maxi i'm totally fine with that because i'm not gonna be doing anything this turn uh so yeah we're gonna go and search out our uh our hot spring and then we're going to go and set one two three four and pass now notably i did set in the uh pendulum columns but that's not going to matter, trust. They're going to go to battle phase. I'm going to flip up the Onslaught, and then I'm going to flip up Hot Spring. We're going to activate the effect of the Hot Spring in order to search out the Queen, and then we're going to activate the effect of our Onslaught in order to special summon the Queen. Now, notably, uh, no one has read a card in their goddamn life. Just like it has eight words. Sorry, nine words. It has nine words on it. Amazonist monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. That's it. You'd be surprised how many people... Just refuse to read it. My opponent's gonna set two and pass. A-okay. Cool. Uh, we're gonna draw into Secret Arts. Not really the greatest, but hey, we're just going to proceed to the battle phase at this point. We're going to pitch our evenly matched in order to grab up our Golden Whip, just because we can. And then we're going to banish their Mudora, as well as trigger the Hot Springs to gain additional er, life points. We're then going to fuse in, fusion off into Empress. Activate or er, uh, punch in for 28 and just pass the turn there. Now, we do have the double called by, so no matter what they draw, I'm feeling pretty confident. And of course, they draw literal best card off of the top of the deck, that being Rhino. That's fine. We're just going to call by the card, and at this point, the game is over, but my opponent's going to sit here and uh, make it make us play it out. They're going to activate the Imperm as if it did something. I... I sure i don't know uh cool uh we're gonna draw into the onslaught that doesn't really matter we're just going to go straight to the battle phase we're going to attack in and of course we're going to banish the opponent's monster and then attack in with queen and deal lethal a good game all right once again we are going second and we drew imperm and evenly matched this time however the rest of our hand isn't the greatest hot springs kind of okay um but we are playing against zombie world now luckily 
Uh, for us, we don't really care about Zombie World. That's fine. We just care about Amazonist monsters. My opponent is going to then banish their Necro World Banshee to special summon the Gozuki and then special summon the Wolf. Uh, and then we are going to dump the Mizuki. They're going to normal summon the Raiden and mill some cards that weren't very good and go into Chaos Ruler. Of course, I'm going to negate this with the Emperor because that is scary. I don't want them to mill five. That's very problematic for us. They're going to go for the Mizuki in order to special summon back their Raiden and then go and XZ into Minerva to get additional mills. Now, sadly, their mills here are also very bad, so they don't really get anything, so they're just going to link off into the IP Mask Arena and then go into the um, the Chaos Ruler here in order to uh, just have access to that. So this Evenly Match isn't going to do all that much, but uh, I'm still going to go for it. You know, it turns off the Mask Arena because they decided not to use that, so, you know, there's that. Uh, I then Normal Summon the Spiritualist, not remembering how this card works, and uh, yeah, that's fine. We're going to activate the War Chief in order to set the Onslaught, and then we're going to set an additional few cards. And again, I put this in the Pendulum Zone because I literally misclicked. Uh, anyway, my opponent is going to set a card, and that's totally fine. We're going to activate the Hot Spring during the end phase in order to grab a Princess. Yay! Well, cool. Uh, so we're going to go and draw into Tiger. Fantastic. We're going to go and Normal Summon the Princess, activate the effect in order to Special Summon our Tiger as well. We're going to grab up the Call. Call is going to be able to search out the uh, Golden Whip, which will then allow us to destroy this zombie world. We're going to activate the Golden Whip and proceed to battle. We're going to send the Tiger to the graveyard and then pop the zombie world. Um, but the this will allow us to Special Summon Queen. I'm also going to flip the Onslaught so that we can banish whatever we hit. And uh, yeah, away it goes. We're going to deal quite a bit of damage and then go and activate our effect in order to fuse off. I go into the Empress here, utilizing my level 5 and um, my Amazonas Queen. Um, so, yeah, there you go. And then we uh, attack in for 36 additional damage. At this point, we are well in control of the game. Um, but, alas, they still have the potential to just kind of combo off. They realize that they can't and uh, concede. Cool, good game. All right, so this game was actually played in the Duelist... Uh, or in the event, sorry... Um, in the Attribute 4 event, so the deck list is a little bit different, um, but we are playing up against Lyralisk, and I believe it's Lyralisk Tri Brigade as well. Um, so they're going to just normal summon a Celeste Wagtail, and of course, that set card is going to be Harpy's Feather Storm. In no world is it not, but that's fine. We're going to bait that out with the War Chief. Uh, they're going to negate that. That's, again, totally fine. We're going to activate our Pendulum and then Normal Summon the Princess just so that we have the ability to walk over their monster so that they don't have, like, a Sapphire Swallow or something like that that they could go into. We're going to set three and pass. Our set cards are pretty good. And, of course, they have the Harpy's Feather Duster. Sure. Um, now, realistically, I should flip up the Onslaught as well as everything else here. Um, they're going to... I'm going to go Call. They're going to Ash that. I'm going to go for the Fusion Spell. And then I should flip up the Onslaught just so that it has protection here. Um, but I decide to let it go um, out comes the Empress, uh, they're gonna pop the set card, and then we get to go for the Onslaught here in order to special summon the Princess, and activate the Princess effect to the Witch, they will activate Imperm! Holy crap, this guy's hand was just all going second cards. Uh, hilarious. And then, of course, they draw the, the Bird Call as well, so now they get their Turquoise Warbler, and they're going to activate the effect in order to grab up their Celeste Wagtail, which gra will grab up the third Bird Call, and then they can exe into the, the Recital Starling, which will then give them access to um, the Barrel Canary, which will then give them access to their uh, their actual win condition, that being the, the Assembled Nightingale. Um, so they're going to go to battle and deal a bit of damage and uh, proceed from there. Now, they could have actually made me take a bit more damage had they attacked in with the Recital Starling as well, because I would have had to take the damage that they would have taken, um, or we both would have had to take damage, which actually would have come up, probably. Um, but alas, we draw into Princess, which is fantastic, so I'm going to normal summon that, and we're going to go for Amazonas Call. Activate the Amazonas Call here, and the basically, basically the only out that I have to assemble Nightingale is hitting it multiple times, since I don't have the Onslaught, um, or... I do play Apollosa. So, that's my play. Because my opponent hasn't activated anything. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe. I'm going to set uh, the hall so that I have additional uh, plays here. And then I go into Mrs. Radiance. Uh, Radiant. Um, notably, I don't have dark access uh, or access to dark cards. So we're going to go for Miss Radiant, uh, which boosts our monsters and decreases their attack points. But this then allows me to go into Apollosa. I go to battle realize that whoops i can't attack due to the war chief restriction if you don't know this card prevents any other monsters from making attacks besides amazonas monsters so there's that um but yeah now we have the apollosa they're gonna activate their effect i'm like okay that's fine because it's on your turn i'm going to negate the recital starling not gonna happen they're gonna go for the bird call that's totally fine they're gonna grab up the turquoise warbler again totally fine and then they're going to activate the celeste wagtail again all totally fine 
And they're going to go to battle. I'm going to activate the hall here in order to grab up the princess once again. That's why we went for it. Uh, they're going to attack and deal a bunch of damage. And uh, yeah, um, I also went for hall because it allows me to gain uh, life points. So there you go. We draw into polymerization. Not the greatest, but that's okay. We're going to go and normal summon the princess. They're going to activate the maxi. That's a-okay with me. Uh, we're going to grab Onslaught here, and then we are going to proceed to the battle phase. We're going to pitch the polymerization that we had and grab back the call. They are going to activate the Assembled Nightingale. I'm going to swiftly negate that, and then we will grab up the call and uh, special summon out Amazonas Warchief. Warchief is then going to set the Hot Spring. We're going to walk over their monster, and then we are going to go to main phase two, activate the call, set the Onslaught, and grab up Queen so that we can special summon it with the Onslaught. Um, this prevents our monsters from being destroyed by battle. And since we know that they have the Turquoise Warbler in hand, this means that they either have to go to battle to walk over uh, the Celeste or the Recital Starling, or they have to search out something like a Sapphire Swallow. Uh, we're just drawn to the Sapphire Swallow, which I can negate with the Apollosa. So I'm going to let them do whatever they want at this point until I see the Sapphire Swallow, which I will have to negate. Out comes the Sapphire Swallow. They're going to activate the effect that I will promptly negate. And uh, at this point, they don't really have anything. I'm going to activate the Hot Spring here as well to grab a Baby Tiger for when I special summon the Queen. They're going to go to battle, and I'm going to add back the Call, activate the Onslaught to special summon the Queen, pr protecting my War Chief. They're going to going to then walk over the Apollosa, and the damage doesn't matter because of Hot Spring. That's why I flipped up Hot Spring earlier. They're then going to go into Ferrajit, which I will then uh, also activate the effect of Hull to gain uh, life points equal to the attack of one of their monsters, which happens to be 1,600 additional um, additional life points. And now they can go for the Turquoise Warbler into this last Wagtail, searching out their last of the spells, that being the Bird Sanctuary. This then allows them to go into some Morph. Yay, some Morph. Uh, they're going to then... Uh, shuffle or sorry um cycle a card and grab up the tanky which grabs up the fractal which grabs up the kit which then sends the nerval which then will add the keros to the hand now they just set two because they don't have another monster and pass uh now notably samorg bird of sovereignty cannot activate its effect in order to go for apex avian in this instance due to the fact that there are one two three four five six seven cards currently on the field in the back row meaning only three cards are or three zones are available so they have to go for a level three or lower monster so of course they go for the cobalt sparrow to grab up the barrel canary at this point it's just a hop skip and a jump to lethal depending on what that set card is now given the fact that i have seen the board and we have also seen this card in particular i'm playing around harpy's feather storm with this play because i know one of those cards is the bird sanctuary because we also know the other one is um the Keros. so i'm guessing one of them is the feather storm um and it's not like they have access to sure or anything so i would doubt that they're playing the um the the revolt uh, anyway, we're going to just go to battle here, and we basically have everything that we need because we can grab up the secret arts here from the graveyard due to our pendulum. We're going to walk into everything and banish it all, and then, uh, yeah, just banish everything. We're also going to activate the effect of our princess to grab up the spiritualist, which will grab up the polymerization, and we did pitch the maxi, which is very funny. So we're going to just banish everything and then walk in with the queen, activate the effect of the spiritual art in order to go into empress, and then walk in for well over lethal. Good game. All right, we're back with the deck, and in all honesty, this deck did surprise me. It does better than I had expected. Uh, now, the bar was basically on the floor with this deck because it wasn't very good, and it still isn't. It's decent. Uh, it got better support. Having access to additional ways to just boost your opponent's or your monsters is very nice um, with the pendulums so that you can actually beat over your opponent's cards, which is something that this deck has had issues with in the past, but uh, even something like Warrock has had issues with. So this version of the deck, or this deck in general, is just Warrocks, but better because we actually have access to good cards, most notably things like Onslaught. Um, Hot Spring is also pretty, pretty, I mean, it's pretty decent. It's not great, but it's, it's pretty decent. It's a surge kind of on the opponent's turn which paired with Onslaught is pretty decent. You also have a quick play fusion, which allows you access to your extra deck and actually having extra deck monsters is very nice. Something again, War Rocks don't have. So all in all, it's a pretty good deck. As a DM deck at the very least, it's a pretty good deck. Um, doesn't compete with things like Blue Eyes or Dark Magician or what have you. Uh, I mean, it's better than Red Eyes, but that ain't saying much. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy it. If you did, a like is very much so appreciated. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh!, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember to always, stay frosty. Bye-bye.
Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.